Summer Resurgence. You know, the big spotlight is going to be on the Rumble. And, and it's a perfect champion for Xersei. He's already played so much of it throughout his history as a professional player. But Revenge also, as as a North American top laner, you know, it, it's always so hard to make your way. And the set was a really big part. He he combined well with the Rumble in those games, you know, keeping people on the Rumble ultimates or even in the cases where they weren't on them, using set ultimate to put them on it. Uh, so I definitely like the, the emergence of some of the synergy from the top jungle duo there on the team as well. On the other side, though, going up against Dignitas, very formidable opponents here. You see the record standing at the top here. 13 and nine now for Dig uh, after the last loss, but I'm always looking at the versatility in picks. You know, Dardoch already, you know, threw out the jungle Darius surprise. Uh, let's see if he's got any more in store for us today. Yeah, Kama, Kalista, Gwen, all pretty normal. It is an interesting red side ban for Dig because I feel like they've price themselves into banning Rumble because mm. Udi is kind of like the most common pick against it. So, it right to being banned, we'll see what Dig do. I really, I really don't usually say, yeah, you need to ban Rumble, but versus Xersei, I, I do feel like this is better, uh, you know, than throwing another like Hail Mary at a solo lane because right now, um, you know, it's, it's definitely very dependent on player, but there's so many options. Nocturne, Set, Lee Sin, they're, like there's just so many solo lane options. They do take out the Tristana instead, um, and Insanity actually, you know, was the first mid lane player to play the mid lane Tristana way back. So definitely it is another target ban here, you know, seeing as Insanity right back in here, uh -oh. uh, you know, for the for the second LCS game of this Lulu, week for them. Kobe. She's creeping in every game. Why, why is that? Why is it an uh-oh? She's creeping in every game. You know, yeah. Okay, it's kind of an uh-oh if, if it becomes every game. I like it when there's a splash. I there's, agree. There's a little dash of enchanters. Um, if it becomes uh, perma, then it definitely gets annoying. But as of right now, I feel like I'm still in the stage of, okay, we can see it. We can see some play around it as well. It is paired with the Zin Zhao, so obviously very good uh, empowering options here for the front line, uh, like we went over last time. But Neo, to me, is definitely an AD carry that you also want to invest heavily in. Neo has, throughout all the iterations of Ding Tox that he has been on, been a hard carry for this team. It's done so much work. Him and Aframu as a duo. Um, I would kind of like to see, you know, uh, a Lulu Cog once again, uh, you, know, you know, from them, from this side. He is very good with his movement from team fights, his, his spatial awareness as an AD carry to be able to carry a lot of those late game team fights for Dig is one of the big reasons they've been so good at team fighting. Um, and yes, they are facing a rumble, but uh, the speed really goes a long way. You know, when you get your Shirelias, also with just the inherent buff there from Lulu uh, to be able to get off of it. All right, well, phase two actually sees Ezreal getting banned. I was maybe even considering it as a pick Neo could have, because it does, of course, help him kite around any he equalizes. Uh, Thresh was the last pick alongside Leona for the supports here. Also, Varus paired for Raze is kind of cool. We're seeing that more of that champion. Now that he's been kind of pushed off the ban bench. Hmm. Uh, but Nocturne ban there. Lee Sin's still up as well, most notably. Uh, yeah. Both these teams. But honestly, so if, I, if I'm... I think this is, this is kind of five-head, because set... If you're a good set player, to me, it's a really good answer into Lee Sin right now. Right. Because the least, the, one of the biggest things about Lee Sin for lane Lee Sin is the range on your E um, changes so many of these matchups. But set, if you're in range for the Lee Sin E, Ooh, let's set do can it. pull you in. And set, set can uh, go throw, throw bows with you in the top lane <laughs> and, and can actually just fight you hard on it. So I kind of like it when leaving that up as the option since... Um, you know, they know that Revenge has to throw down early here. So we'll see if Revenge goes with the Lee Sin option or the set option here. Um, th they know that that's going to be the juggle. So uh, either way will be exciting. All right. So Samira was the thing I was excited about for Neo alongside Danny. You know, these kind of younger up and coming, more up and coming AD carry players from North America. Feeling pretty comfy on the aggressive AD. So Samira is going to be the selection there for Dig. You already said it. He is a hard carry for Dig when he gets going. So. See if you can have a performance there worthy of Samira's style as Lee Sin Jace the last two picks here. So top Lee for Revenge and mid Jace for Insanity almost assuredly given their preferences. But of course, they are flexible as well. Interesting. I would I would honestly rather see the Lulu um, into the Lee Sin rather than the Jace. So it's going to be 
we're gonna actually have to wait till the last second as far as the lane swapping from uh, from Immortals. Oh, they just lock in the the Nar immediately here for Fake God. Whichever one is gonna go up there, honestly. Locking in the Gnar, seeing already the possibility that they could swap the Jace to topside and make Insanity play mid lane Lee Sin uh, is a little risky because uh, definitely like the Jace into Gnar matchup for re Revenge if they if they wanted to make that last second swap. But uh, trying to call it there, Yusui on that Lulu. He's in on the LCS, and guess what? You get to buff up Dardoch. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Zin uh, going to be pretty threatening here. Samira, of course, as well. Pretty nice. With the wild growth there, Samira, one of the few AD carries that really wants to get in the face of her opponents and spin around. But no swaps here. It is going to be Insanity's Jace once again. It's Yasui from Akali to Lulu. You know what? Abadaga can do it. Why not Yasui, Kobe? <laughs> All right, especially with a team like Dig that are so jungle focused uh, and really do play around that Dardoch and Afro Mu leadership. Looking forward to uh, to the early game plan here because generally for Xin Zhao, trying to play around it early, get some early ganks off. Both of them do have the possibilities of, of big setups towards the mid lane. You know, Jace going hammer form, um, you know, with, with the extra damage you can and slows you can bring with Rumble, they can definitely pick him off either way. Right, we'll have to find out. IMT looking to kind of return to their week one form as Dignitas. Still feeling pretty comfy, but do you want to try and pick up a wing with Yasui being in the roster? <laughs> Tough matchup yesterday. We'll see how they fare today up against IMT. Both teams looking to bounce back here. If there is one pro view that I recommend most for this game, it would be Xerse Rumble. This man has been playing Rumble Jungle before it was cool. Back in Season 7, Unicorns of Love. He always he always brought in a lot of fans because he was he was looking to branch out and pick these more unique jungle picks. Uh, you know he he played Rangari, played a bunch of Ivern. Um, definitely a good matchup for Dardoch, who is uh, very versatile as far as the NA scene goes. Yeah, so. this is a jungle matchup we're pretty excited about. Actually, it was in some ways the battle of the best Rumble right now in North America. <laughs> but uh, Dardoch saying, "I don't need it. Take it. I got Lulu." I'm. I really was hoping to see, you know, maybe maybe a delayed invade. Uh, so we do have two swaps over to uh, sweepers, but because they recall, that means there won't be a late invade on Rumble. And I just every Rumble game, I want to try and preach for it. It definitely depends on your lanes. I mean, your solo lanes are Nar and Lulu uh, for the opening stages. It's going to be hard to follow up. Uh, bottom lane is the main priority for Dardoch early on. Uh, Samira, Leona, uh, Xin Zhao, definitely capable three-person, uh, you know, volatile options down here. So we'll see if he actually does skip some camps and, and try and make a play down on bottom side. Already the early trinket ward, and this is only one yellow trinket, by the way, for the Immortals bottom side. So this is actually really important for, for Dig because this is going to be the bottom side where they want to make the most plays early around Neo, around Aphromoo. Um, so maybe Dardoch does like red uh, into Raptors into blue kind of quadrant and kind of times the, the expiration of that Trinket Ward from Immortals. We got a lot of time to plan <laughs> all yep. of our early game plans here uh, as we jump real quick into a pause. But yeah, generally for a jungler like, Lee, uh, like uh, you know, either Lee Sin or Xin Zhao, um, but generally here for Xin Zhao, Dardoch is looking at Nar on top side into Lee Sin, not gonna have a lot of playmaking early. Lulu into the Jace, not really gonna have a lot of you know options early there as well. So both teams know there should be a hyper focus, uh, you know, around the Leona Samira lane, and and it's kind of around can you play around bouncing that wave back? First ward timer was already invested, and then they had to switch over to a sweeper for Destiny there. So I'm, that makes me very curious if. Rumble is actually just going to try and do. Rumble should do the full clear down to bottom side, but you know maybe Dardoch, maybe Xin Zhao gets down there first, skips a couple camps, and, and creates some action. Right, that's the fun tension, right? Because Revenge gave the you know a pretty good leash to Xerxes to kick off that jungle path, right? Whereas Xin definitely a lot more flexible, probably wants to get more often than not uh, as that kind of champion. Rumble just wants to ignore you for as long as humanly possible, 
and uh, try and farm out uh, as quickly as you can to level six and beyond. As uh, we do have a pause, of course, we are investigating well, an audio issue. We'll let you know where we're up to, but can't imagine it'll be too long. So. Yeah, they're estimating not too long, so hopefully that comes true. Uh, as far as the rumble, though, it's a little bit it's a little bit more nuanced there because rumble even early still has really good damage output if you can get a counter gank. Right. Um, so. If you can actually get, say, into bottom lane side brush with a sweeper that your support pur purchased early, you know, that may be the the call from Immortals as we're, we're trying to think through some of these early trinket usages because that's the main difference here for Immortals. Um, so maybe with the early investment, uh, Destiny picking up that sweeper, they're looking for that and you can get Rumble into that side brush because a Rumble, you know, even level four Rumble coming out of the a side lane brush, you know, they have Thresh there, so easy lantern in. You can roast someone in a, in a counter gank because you get to charge up your uh, heat within the brush waiting for them. And as soon as they commit to the melee range with a Zin Zhao dash in, Zin Zhao can't get out. Uh, so this is really going to be a lot of round timings uh, as far as the, the possibilities here on bottom side. Definitely love the, the investment, though, into the early sweepers. It creates for more, more volatility, removing vision rather than adding vision. Um, I think it's, uh, it's definitely fun for the amount of action in the game to always remove more vision and, and vision destroying tools rather than overload the game. Uh, with more and more wards as oh. we, uh, we don't want to travel oh, I remember. back in time. Yeah, I, I remember I remember the early days. There were so many. Just stacks and stacks of green wards, Kobe. Mm. Support Zara, buy nothing but wards and Oracle's Elixir. Buy some gold generating time. items so you can <laughs> buy some more wards. Sometimes they didn't even do that. They're like, I can't do that. I don't have time for that. i got to go ahead and ward these 15 different brushes. I, I, I like to. Buying BF swords. I like to, as you can see, uh, player cameras here. Yeah, we're, we're still sitting through a pause. There, there are diff There are there are breakpoints in pauses. I don't know what the actual breakpoints are, but if a pause is known to be short, then they're not allowed to talk, and so you just get these stares and these these laughs and everyone kind of twitching here until you hit that breakpoint where they're like, okay, never mind. This one's long enough. You get you guys can go through it. Um, and in these scenarios, since it is just the start of the game, they're running. They're just running through these level ones. They're like, okay. Uh, you know, a any type of early info that we actually have to go off of. Can we get our timing correct for, for our bottom lane gang? Yeah, are, are we going to be able to rush through them? We did see, oh, Thresh has a sweeper. Maybe they're trying to, you know, pull lane gank off on us. Uh, and it's there's no communication. It's all inside your head. <laughs> and you did describe kind of like, you know, jungle is difficult for lots of different reasons, but kind of that paradigm you're talking about, right, where you have to balance how much time can I get away with farming these camps versus how much time do I need to be in other places affecting my sidelines and either, you know, defending a gank and counter ganking or ganking because there's an opportunity there that my laners or my team or were setting up to try and get more gold because obviously kills are worth more gold than the monsters you're farming in the jungle. So it's hard. you got to think through a lot of different things. Got to have the vision, got to have the knowledge, got to have the comms, got to have the brain. This is this and what I said before, and many, many other reasons. Uh, despite a decade of playing this game, I do not play jungle. It's, I've got it's an hard. update for you. All right. Uh, yeah, this is an interesting one. Ooh. Uh, and it's more interesting because if you look at him, he's got one of his ears off on mm -hmm. his headset. Uh, apparently, the audio issue is that Cersei has significantly louder game sound in one ear than the other Ooh. ear. It's a very weird bug to me. Maybe it's like turbo blasting him and that's why he <laughs> took one ear off. But my yeah, first yeah. reaction was, yes, my first reaction was, ah, I found the solution. He has one earphone off. That's why <laughs> game sound is louder <laughs> in one ear than the other you ear. You think it solved it? It's actually the solution, not the symptom here. And uh, they're, they're working at the right cell. Hopefully on stage we can get that one balanced out. You see the uh, crew changing out pieces here of hardware. He doesn't use the uh, the like <laughs> the Galaxy Rumble skin, does he? Because if it's 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 significantly larger, louder I, in one ear, and that's the skin you're using, my goodness, is that ear gonna be wrecked by the end of that game? Just the end of your first clear. That used to be the skin meta for Rumble, uh, but it has evolved. With a lot of the Rumble in the jungle lately, which I, I yeah, get. It's very yeah. very uh, very That's clever. You know, Chromas have really uh, oh, shaken man. up the, the the meta. Yeah, the yeah. skin meta as well. Again, going all the way back to the Dark Ages. Back then, if they had a skin, it was the lost game. Couldn't beat them. Let me tell you, Kenning with a skin, <laughs> most terrifying champion in season one. You know what's also terrifying too, and how I actually respect this uh, this audio issue because if it is just like insanely loud in one ear, Rumble is 
is actually one of the worst champions to be playing because every every few seconds you're overheating warning, and it's gone, warning, warning, warning. just it's <laughs> so loud in your ear. That's yeah, that's honestly <laughs> gonna be insanely annoying. So there we Alrighty. go. They got it fixed. All righty, so here we are, back we go again. Uh, definitely curious about the level one, but my goodness, Afro is already in there, 2v2. Don't need no jungler. In fact, maybe Afro is trying to prime the 2v2 a little, Kobe. Get him low! And let me say, phase three, Zin Zhao did skip Krugs. Here this is go. not a full clear. Dardock is going red, Raptor, blue side. He will be able to get there before Xersei if he tries to well actually they didn't see them drop that first trinket ward i don't believe so it, it really depends a lot on whether they had the info on the timing of the drop of that trinket ward um but dardock definitely looking towards bottom side you saw the early trade there it is difficult because it's a cleanse exhaust lane so even if aframu gets in there you have to remember on a cleanse target don't immediately ignite after your stun, or else they'll get double value out of it. Here comes Dardock. Oh, going in again. Ray's already taking so much damage. Tamira diving in. They might just do a 2v2. Ignite is down. Cleanse is using oh, it. Dardock, baby. Perfect timing out of Dignitas. Destiny is going to go down as well. Ah, pastry time. You know, I do dislike pauses, but because the pause allowed us to talk through the exact play out of the beginning of this game. I'm not even mad. Hey, Dignitas, flawless execution there. Drew it up in the screen. Now we got mid lane continuation. Oh, very nice hammer back, but you see we're still going. Nice glitter lance. Does slow down insanity, but no kills forthcoming. It is TP, of course, in the mid for Yasui, so not nearly as much pressure, but Dardock, just such a good setup by Dig here. And it's all in the timing space, right? That's why, you know, talking through it, it's straight from champ select, you're like, this is all around timings on your bounce back. And they do have the ward here expiring, but it is on three camp, court of four camp, double buff bottom. Just go for the engage, Aframu, layering very well there around the uh, around the cleanse too. I'm just, I'm just so happy that they were able to get that off because you know Rumble is trying to do full clear, efficiency clear, um, and it's around how cautious can you be for your bottom side, uh, respecting the Zin Zhao threat. All right, well, very nicely set up by both Dignitas and Kobe. Galaxy Brain once again coming through his revenge, dueling Fake God right now, feeling pretty comfy in his 1v1. Plenty of mobility here for the lead to kind of dance around the knob, but of course, Mini Nard could be annoying. Bottom side, still going well in the CS department for Raze, which is good, but that's not going to last too long as Neo's going to finish farming out the waves that is, are getting pushed in. And of course, that kill god he's gotten with one kill and one assist is more than enough compensation. Yeah, this this is definitely the ideal start for, for Dignitas. You've got Neo here, extremely, extremely fed, and Xenity also had, like, even though it was a very quick gank from Dardock mid, you know, a decent chunk onto, onto a Jace when they're playing the sustain game, you see two corrupting potion charges and two biscuits, so shouldn't be too difficult for, for Insanity to heal right back up, but um, no, no like deep wards around mid. It's just very, very cautious control ward there, very shallow kind of uh, river brush wards there for him. Um, and honestly, it is gonna be a lot more focused towards, uh, towards the dragon and towards setting up some defense for the bottom side. Now that Raze and Destiny ha are summoner spellless, uh, they are very, very vulnerable targets. All right, well, so they also covering the push, maybe thinking Dardock was gonna wrap around again. Does get the info as well, invading the jungle. Okay. Thank God, look at a 1v1 revenge in the top lane, forcing that flash solo there. There you go, Fake God back on Nar, one of the champions he has consistently throughout his career, uh, you know, had highlight plays on. For, for this organization. Gets a solo flash out of revenge there. Uh, very respectable cooldown lead on the Lee Sin. Gonna remove some of that playmaking and gets the early recall off uh, for his steel caps. Yes, Xersei is rumble and so steel caps don't help you there, but Xersei's gonna have to pay attention to bottom lane so much uh, because there's no summoner spells there. So your rumble is probably not gonna be the biggest threat and the early value from steel caps uh, is definitely going to be big there, as Jace would be the other one that would possibly combine with uh, Revenge on top side. So definitely looks to be another uh, very consistent opening, I feel like. Yeah, Dig actually up like a thousand gold, which in this early game is really nice. Insanity again trying to get aggressive, but Dardock is 
The one waiting in the wings for Dignitas. So Insanity, just like Jace, usually a kind of champion that, you know, bullies people around, at least pushes you in often, right, in the early stages. But not Lulu. Lulu's just glitter lancing the wave and annoying you. Yep, dodge and shock blasts, uh, no problem here. So Yasui has a pretty easy life. His Zin Zhao that he's trying to buff up did get the completion of both kills on bottom side. So a really good conversion for Dignitas uh, early on, allowing them to play off that synergy. He is also going the Divine Sunder build, which I actually really like. It's kind of the medium ground where because this item had such significant buffs, uh, it both provides you with the defensive bruiser capabilities uh, with the cooldown reduction, with the extra health inherent in the item, and the sustain off healing in addition to your passive sustain was in. But it also does does significant chunks. Like these, the Sheen procs uh, with the percentage max health damage uh, are very, very significant. Add up so quickly with a champ like Zin Zhao that has a attack speed steroid of his own, plus a Lulu attack speed steroid. Um, being able to just chase people down. Uh, so definitely, definitely some good synergy built up here. You already see early investment in more cooldown reduction from the cooldown reduction rush in boots from Yasui. This also provides Lulu with the extra movement speed to be able to follow around your Zin Zhao. Uh, any sort of roam plays, uh, they can look for these early dragons. Uh, really do expect Ding Toss, especially with the early kills for their bottom lane, uh, to try and at least fight Immortals on that. Immortals are starting it really early, though, with the, the vision advantage through River. They invest Control Ward up towards mid and toward bottom side. They do not want to give hold here uh, on the bottom half of the map. Yeah, already back to pushing in the 2v2 for Raze and Destiny. Both Dardoch and Aphrom have actually been wandering around a little bit together, trying to clear some vision out and see uh, who might be lurking in this bottom side river. But no Dragon started just yet. Neo with a lot of solo time here on the Samira, but did spend that money finally after taking a reset. So despite, again, that CS differential, Neo is going to be just fine, if not ahead, as Fake God is just perma pushing Revenge here in the top side as well. Counterpick working out nicely here early on for Fake God. Certainly is. Able to keep some tower pressure up. Turret plate knocked off as well. Always feels so nice. Yes, the flash is, you know, close to coming back up now. Dardock was not really ever going to focus on the top side of the map, uh, invest more resources there, but knowing that you were able to burn that solo does remove some threat for possible counterplay there, um, you know, and, the, and their own play. So, control wards down through the entire river here. Uh, line of scrimmage for Dignitas. Yeah, Digger definitely doing all the work to try and take this dragon, so I imagine mm. I'll be moving on that objective soon. TP for revenge. I feel like all but seals. This dragon, although Fake God may be forced to use this in a second, because Revenge is going to kick him down the solo kill. This time it's on his shoes as Fake God will flash this time. And I think that's going to be a pretty sizable force here. You see Zerse threatening for uh, for an invade. He actually calls it off. They know he's got teleport, and Revenge just used his. So there's not going to be a very uh, a very wide window, and it's... It's just going to be Fake God teleporting back, looking for Mega and Zin Zhao on top. Yeah, Dardox here as well. One of the few times he's actually going to be here by the sounds of things. 2v2, they're brewing. Good little dodge there for Raze up top, so Zenith Blade doesn't connect. And now Destiny looking for the same, but does not connect on either. Neo just barely sidestepping that as uh, Destiny gets a little field goal there. In the bottom side, it's a single in AFL for anyone playing at home. Dardox also starting the Rift Herald up here. So should be able to take this one out with no contest here. There's more than enough pressure with Fake God coming down to help out. Yeah, Rift Herald does take a significant time investment, though. So only down to 4K health. Now they're going to need another uh, eyeball proc at least. The pineapples, Kobe. Zerks with the ulti ready to go. Have to be careful here. It is a 3v3 right now. Revenge, no kick, but does a Bottom flash. Lane. Data going in. Dignitas want this one. As you mentioned, Aphrom is already in mid lane, so Dig will take it. And it, look, it's just a hover bottom lane. So Dignitas do threaten with sending Samira halfway up, but Samira should be able to get right back to bottom side before the wave crashes. And this this is the, the strong evolution of these Rift Herald plays. You work off of your top side pressure, then you only have to hover. And just the threat of Samira going is going to be enough. Raise. Oh, Neo, oh. look at the solo kill. He flushed the ulti as well, I think. Yep, but Raze gets out of there with a flash of his own. 
It is going to be traded back for the Dragon in the end. Uh, Ray's respecting it there uh, as they do trade flashes. Is going to be exciting. Remember that the Rift Herald is in the hands of Dardoch, so they might try uh, and go for the follow-up on Revenge. He's had time for his flash to come back up, uh, so it might be a bit tricky to, to actually pin him down, but they can certainly get significant damage done to the tower. All right, well, Dardoch is up here, as you mentioned. Already with the Herald if he wants to use it. Fake God has been Does continually pushing. It. It's mini, it's exhausted mini. Oh, Fake God, let him hit that Q. If you let him hit that Q, he probably baits him in. All right, well, now we know it's because the Rift Herald has been channeled, but this is good. That's the plate money that Fake God wants. It's an easy spot for Dardoch to quickly drop that so Fake God can collect the gold. And now Dardoch can go back home, spend his money, get the Divine Thunder actually now finished. And Fake God collects the plate. So really efficient stuff there for Dignitas. Still building on this gold lead. Up almost 2,000 gold at this point. Very nice early game from them. Hmm. Interesting too, though, giving up the early the early dragon on the back half of that bottom play and raising Destiny, again being able to push in for another turret plate this game. Um, you know, this is one of the reasons why Varus and Thresh are so highly prized. Um, extremely strong early push as well, and this is with a successful bottom lane game. Remember, this is with both summoners on both bottom lane players from Immortals being burned because of the gank timing from Dardoch early on uh, and the pressure of the all-in lane from Dig. Even with all of that, they still have so much pressure in lane uh, with the harassment of Varus and the safety of, of Thresh allowing them to, you know, push it back out. And again, that poke Samira so short range. It's going to be tough to feel like you're kept out constantly by Varus, especially because Aphromoo has been out of lane so often as Dardoch has set up a little store here in the river, hoping for a customer to walk on in. But uh, no one taking it just yet as Dardoch will clear this ward and take the Grump. And Dignitas will continue playing uh, a good early game, but again, not rushing things here. It feels like the pace is very deliberately chosen here on the Dig side. And it's interesting here from Immortal's side because they're they're so heavily invested in uh, long range damage. You know, with the Jace pickup, uh, early lethality investment there, raise as well, early lethality on the Varus. Um, Dignitas, if they can make one of these big plays right before the objective, it takes away a lot of that viability. All right, here goes Dardoch again, but the Equalizer is down. Dardoch, he's on top of it. Neo just goes in and assassinates Raze. Now gonna look to spin around. Insanity Trick is pumped. And Dardoch goes in, looking for the dive. Destiny with a wonderful stopwatch, but it's not going to save him for too much longer. Is now Xerxes overheating, looking to try and take the trade kill for Dardoch. But it's a triple kill out of Neo Kobe. Can't poke me if you're dead. And Dignitas again, another play off the bottom side, playing off of Aphromoo's Leona. Dig, make it count. Huge, huge play again. This is going to be so much damage, if not the entire turret for Neo here. Chopping this sucker down. Four kills on the Samira. This is going to be a huge snowball for Dignitas. I thought Zerkte was here, ready with the counter gank, but Dig just go all in in the bottom side. I, l I actually really like the uh, the play around the lantern there. Uh, you know, he he doesn't take it immediately as Aphromoo is trying to predict the lantern take to land the Zenith Blade uh, between it, but then he just walks up uh, and gets the summoner spells out there. Dardoch, no hesitation, dives right in. This one's close. That's a little bit of a clencher. Samir is able to dash in for the extra damage and finish it off, make sure Xerse doesn't get the counter kill for himself. But it is just a wash on the bottom side of the map here for Dig. It is just skirmish victory after skirmish victory here for Dignitas. And that one had just twofold rewards because of the first tower bonus. Uh, for Dig, this gold lead just balloons out of control. And since their composition is so much more tanky, is just so much more hardy, uh, <laughs> if your damage dealers are getting an in early influx of gold with four kills now onto the Samira, it makes it very easy to kind of walk up uh, and just force these plays on your opponents. You've got Leona, you've got the Gnar, uh, you know, Fake God fully charged up on the Rage Bar right now and has Teleport available. So this is a reason you can see Dingtosh hard flex into the jungle. Power play here. 
uh, during this window, Immortals just have to give ground. Yeah, I mean, you couldn't ask for, you know, better distribution to build on your early game that Dardock had, you know, from the level one that we did get to outline. It's 4 0 1 for Neo. Bit of extra gold there for Dardock with the kills on Afro, of course, with the perfect score for support. 0 0 5 as he's in there on to raise. My goodness, Back man. As Afro's going to get comboed back in on, he gets out of there, and Neo, he's going to have to go all in. He does get the kill, but a huge amount of gold given over as a result, and Dardock, he's still chasing it, and he's the target over the wall. He goes, Lulu Wild Growth is just coming off, and this one is revenge. Will get away. I have to either get one back, but Dig were not backing away from that one. Oh, they brute forced it all right. <laughs> they may be tanky, but that tower dive definitely left a mark. Two for two in the end. Dink Dice will still claim the rewards off the bottom side of the map, but. What a game over that wall, hopping it three times, does result in Dragon number one there for Dignitas and the follow through on his uh, execution. Here's a look at it though, Afro move, ults and flashes over, Raze had a good Prowler's Claw to gain distance, then flashes away, and they just flip Neo right into that tower. Dardock then is taking a bunch of tower uh, shots, and as they jump over into the Raptor pit, they can force Revenge back out on the other side with the huge health advantage. They still pick up the dragon, you know, retaining their smite, retaining their jungler's life, but uh, did give some of that cash over to the side of Immortals, and Immortals, you know, happy to get something for themselves. They're still trying to group up to make use of, uh, you know, their Jace into Varus, early lethality uh, kind of poke here, and when you combine that with a Rumble Ultimate, uh, whether you use Rumble Ultimate to slow them to allow you to hit the skill shots, or you use it as follow-up, as super long range, the idea is the same. You're trying to you're trying to use your your poke uh, before Dig can get these flank angles and get this hard engage. The problem is that Dig have actually, with this early lead, been given the options to run just straight at you, and they actually don't need. Uh, you know, a flank angle, they can just str uh, run straight at your face to go for the engage uh, right into your into your poke, into your damage, and, and kind of take away your timing that way. Yes, the classic front flank, the one mm. everyone always forgets. I mean, yeah, just battle songing with a Lulu, whimsied up. Wild Growth gets popped. Dardock's having a field day. 2-0-5 right now. Divine Sundra finished item number two. Approaching relatively quickly, but Neo, man, that death. Costly, as he gives extra gold over to Raze, but still a ridiculously good threat on the dig side here as you see we have swapped the top side for a little while longer. Just gonna be pushing in the old lease in. They might be might be kicking themselves a little later as these uh, various arrows and shock blasts start to hurt. The uh, Mana Mune is just completed, so Ray's still working on stacking that one. But that's really the, the point of pain. And once you get that completed, if they're able to land a few of these before the objective starts up, that's where Immortals try and claw their way back into this. TikToks, though, should be able to finish up on the outer towers. Mid lane goes down quite quickly. Top side is so low already that you can easily transition your pressure over. Um, should be a quick pickup, uh, by the way, on Collector. There you go. Neo completes his Collector for Samira. Love that cash in. Affords for the the most epic of Samira ultimates. Trying Ooh. to get all of the last hits and set up those pentas. I think the Dardock Spidey Sense kicked in at just the right moment. Because Revenge knew he was there. Dardock already invaded for Vision. Mm. As you see, he's pushing in the top side. But I think with how forward Revenge was playing, Dardock's like, wait a second. I shouldn't go down here because I can't see anyone else from IMT on the map right now. There were, I think, four people in the top side for IMT looking to maybe try and find a straggler. But unfortunately, no pickup there for Diggers. They will finish off the outer tower sooner rather than later as Uncensor has been purged up by Asui. He is committing to the cause of buffing up the jungler and AD carry. Yes, sir. No other reason to pick this champion. <laughs> Don't show me a Luden's Lulu. I'm going to get really mad, pastry time. <laughs> They've got the Sorelia's Ardent combination. This is where Dig get to push it ahead. Speed up Jin Zhao and Nar and Leona. Get that brute force engage. Find your front flank, as we've termed, I guess, to ride into the enemy team. Aphromu, you need damage behind you, though. Get hooked up near uh, here. A, a little bit aggressive. Oh, on insanity. The just gets picked up there. Dardock again <laughs> with the Lulu in the back pocket. Just charges in, gets an easy pick up there. And even though Afro and Neo were scuffling with the enemy in their own jungle, Dig will still push through here and take the tower. All right, there you go. One Shirelli is active, one dead opponent. Insanity's flash was not up quite yet, barely coming off of cooldown now. 
but the power of the Lulu, Zin Zhao. Speed him up, you guarantee that engage. And now it's just easy picking. Oh, Flash got the stun though. Buff of the auto through. There's good box action from Destiny. will disengage the rest of the fight. But you can tell Dig, every angle looks good right now. Waiting for the cooldown. See, you see his ulti cooling down pretty swiftly. Also, they can run fake coding, which is fun. Megana sometimes has trouble getting involved. So Fake God can zoom in there alongside the rest of his friends in the mega form. Not recommended in the mini form unless you're very close to transforming. Dragon also up in 20 seconds. IMT will be first to the table to try and look for that objective. It's so hard to play these types of comps, though, for Immortals while you're behind. Um, in, in these sorts of situations, maybe you actually have to just start increasing your risk tolerance because if you don't start to get some money back in this game right now, then it, Dignitas are just going to continue to steamroll objective after objective, take everything off this map, and you never get a chance to group up and, and find your poke first. So if you, if you don't establish your own pockets of Fog of War with your control wards through your jungle uh, in spots where you know Dig are going to go and try and create your own comeback, the, it's very hard for the comeback to kind of be fed to you. The only way that really happens is if there is an insane, insanely fumbled tower dive from Dig, um, which you know is the very risk-averse way to go about it. You just kind of huddle at your tower until uh, you hope for your opponents to make that big mistake, and then when you get your gold, you try and take your opportunity to strike. I mean, see what IMT can do. Certainly is tricky. First thing is going to be, of course, getting vision here and sticking together, trying to again pick off what you can. The map's pretty small for them right now. Is the other trouble only one tower taken versus the nice open outer towers being felled there for Dig means that there's not nearly enough space for IMT to find pick and or poke. Mm. I mean, is getting going. Everyone's got their mythic online here for IMT. Yeah, I mean, as soon as these two Monomunes transform, that's really the only thing that they're waiting on. As soon as you get those Muramana transformations, then your Shock Blast, Varus Arrow, Rumble Ultimate, super long range, can actually kill someone. Uh, you know, then your accuracy with your skill shots uh, really does have a lasting effect. As of right now, they're they kind of they kind of got pea shooters. They're just throwing pea shooters <laughs> at Dig and Dignitas have uh, have such a gold lead and so many ways to find their engage that the risk versus reward just isn't there for Immortals at the moment. So they're kind of forced into this. Ah, we got a turtle. Hold on to some vision that we can. Maybe we get somebody you know opening up a mistake and, and caught astray. But um, there's one transformation. So one more to go here. Derek Sun as well for Dardak, so a little bit tankier, as we kind of mentioned. You know, even if you do huddle at your tower, Dignitas probably going to bust through the front door here. So many tools for them to get aggressive. The other thing is that Dig have a very good turn off of Baron. So they don't sustain a lot of damage by starting it up. Because you have so much attack speed on Xin Zhao, you can just continually heal on your passive. But they also have Leona and Nar. So their turn is amazing. They're just trying to bait out Immortals, look for the big flank. We'll get the TP out of revenge. But now Dardox going in there. Now the TP flanks coming in for Dig there as Afro dives straight in with a Zenith Blade. Got the stun on revenge. But he needs to get out of there pretty safely. Can't get in as Xerxes does get through. Now Fake God stride breakering in. Ray's going to be slain by Dardox on the other side. It's Neo. He's the one diving in, looking to try and build up them style points. And now Fake God goes Mega, finally trying to find something. Revenge going to get slowed. Not into the wall. Wallop follows up. Neo's going to find it, but doesn't have enough damage. Missed timing here for Dignitas. The teleport is a little late, or the turn is a little early. Fake God, the channeling not completed there for Nar as Dardock and Afro move go in. And so Afro is chunked down and killed before they even get there. Still turning on the Baron, though. Again, 5v2 right now, just insanity in revenge. So not even a smite here to threaten. Dardock smite's cooling off. Here's Destiny Dome and Xerxes with the reinforcements that now dig one to turn. They knew that was the plan likely all along. But Dignitas will be pushed off Baron and Dig will pick up no more extra kills and less revenge. Can he zip his way out of here? He is Lee Sin. Dardock still chasing. No, there's a smite down from Dardock. Oh, he's in there. Play from Destiny to try and protect him. Ulti out, exhaust down. Zerxe now going to go in on the backside, but Neo's going to dive in with the rest of the squad. But Samira, so low, dives to insanity. Dardock, though, still alive now. Fake on diving in. <laughs> and Dignitas throw their AD carry to the walls and get almost an ace. In fact, it is an ace. Dardock is healing under the tower. Pastry time with the Steric shield, with the Divine Sunder Brox, with the Lulu shield shields on him he can't be stopped and the front flank continues for digging and toss the bot <laughs> ace is collected 
And they bust straight through the middle here. Going to take at least the inhib off the table. Maybe run back to Baron, maybe reset. Doesn't really matter. Dignitas so far ahead now. 7,000 gold up against IMT. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. Dardock is just playing this with Doesn't so much stop. confidence because he's got the Lulu behind him. He knows. Into four people. Even gets exhausted. Really good ultimate to knock two back. Doesn't take much damage for the Rumble ultimate. Then dives under the turret. Tanks oh, the whole thing. Steric shield. Fake God's able to get a massive Gnar ultimate into the side of the wall. Actually, uh, actually just insane right there. And again, Dig, understanding what their comp can do. One of the most fun things about this team is their team fighting and also just how willing they are to take fights. Mm. They know they can't just sit around, let the game go on. And when you have this kind of lead, definitely no reason to sit on your hands as Fake God, Strike Breakers in, wall, into the wall we go. Oh, it's just a full combo. Reyes finally gets out of the Prowler's Core, but it doesn't matter. Yasui able to nab his second guild again. The man has 13 Madras stacks. <laughs> We've gone all the way back to full Enchanter. Keep on stacking them up, Yasui. This is the position you love to be in for Lulu. Just all power to Dignitas. These towers will melt. Yeah, Immortals can get some... You know, side turrets for oh, themselves, going. but it's just going to be a I can hear them calling after we're getting in there. Under Xerxes goes, Neo grabs the kill as Dignitas descend. Once again, Fake God ulti is like almost pack up as the Transformers getting close. They'll take two inhibs now as they break down the bottom side. And Dignitas just unrelenting this game. Brute Force, name of the game, Pastry. Just get on in there. Oh, 16 Fake kills, God, do it again. Good kick by Revenge. Gets him out of there, Yasui, the wrong one to be taking the tower. Does shield himself, Fake God shoves them back. Dardock once again is in there. Pops the ulti though, now maybe running a little low on health. But over we go, after we're not quite into the fountain, and Dignitas there just not stopping. They're gonna grab one tower, they're gonna grab two, it's gonna be it all here for Dig. Immortals trying to get them off the next, but they've got nothing as Neo grabbed himself a double to end the game, and Dignitas take a bow. A very stylish end of that game. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a big smile on Dardog's face. Zin Zhao, you get your first gank successful double kill on the bottom side of the map, knowing you also have a Lulu mid lane for late game in your pocket. Then the second play on bottom side as well, bringing in the rest of the team. Three kills plus the tower off of that. It's just dream scenario right there. Living the Zin Zhao dream. Yeah, that's a... Uh... That's the kind of game you want to play when you pick Zinja Lulu. That's Dignitas looking real good. You see what you know, calling off for a game. You know, had the yeah. Akali game on the Lulu this time, but that the strategy works beautifully there for Zig from minute one. Very solid stuff, uh, you know, from Fake God in, in, on the top side oh, as yeah. well. I mean, yes, you are on an island, but he picks his Gnar into the Lee Sin. You know, he's, he's burning summoner spells by himself, uh, able to join in, and with the with the commotion that Xin Zhao Lulu calls and all the focus of everyone into the grouping on that champion in the middle, it, it opens up for these big Gnar ultimates and all of a sudden everybody's grouped up right next to the wall. Boom, hit them all with the big stun. So great stuff there from Dig, able to effectively snowball. Good early game plan, they played off it. Yes, there was a pause. Everybody just kind of sitting there mulling it over. Um, and they're able to follow up really well on the champ select that they have. I like to think of Dardock the whole time. He's just like, I know exactly what's going on. He's already got the plan in motion. Everyone's like linked telepathically. We were drawing it up during the, the pause. Exactly. We're like, okay, like we've gone over it. They got to go bottom lane. We aren't going to Nar, we're not going to mid lane. <laughs> really cool stuff to see it actually uh, enacted on, on stage there, though. Uh, for Immortals, they had a banger of a week one opening oh, here yeah. to summer. 3-0. They literally set a record for their bottom lane. Biggest gold difference at 15. Uh, so taking a couple punches here in week number two, back-to-back -back losses. Uh, they wanted to give, you know, as a bonus, uh, some time to Pretty. Got his stage game. Uh, Insanity back here. Uh, another loss suffered for them. So they're going to have to rebound here. One more game in this weekend uh, to right the ship and, and kind of refocus. This one, too, was was a hard one because they, they also got Xerxes Rumble. Um, and they they had this really good plan of, of of trying to play off of this early poking power, group up siege with it, 
uh, but were never able to realize it because they were playing catch up to dig. I've seen a lot of rumbles today, Kobe. Get a lot of early game kills, and this kind of feels like more the game when that doesn't happen, right? When you don't walk into a lane, you get one or two kills, you get the early sword truth. Suddenly, you're like the most powerful champion of the game at ten minutes. It was the opposite, right? Dardock, he has a strategy. He's going down the bottom side, and then like. Like you said, had the insurance, but maybe didn't need it, given how fed he was that game. And I always give my honors to the support player who, yes, if I don't, <laughs> the other support player, After me. if I if I know that, like, you know, I, I don't have a lot of lanes to, to work with here, uh, this one has to work out. This bottom lane play needs to work out, or else Rumble, who's going for this full clear, is, is going to be ahead in experience, and, and they need to get something out. Aphromoo played the engage really well on this timing. As the ward is expiring in the river, goes for the engage on the big ward, gets both summoner spells out of the Varus, you know, does set Dardock up for our success there and and make it nice and easy. Yeah, just an overall excellent performance across the board for Digging Tusk, but now we're going to be heading over to the stage where Dash is joined by Yasui for our Verizon post-game interview. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. Standing by with Yasui is exactly correct. After a sweet victory, deathless game for you out here on the stage. But first question to you is, it's been since 2019 that we've seen you competing out here on the LCS stage. So how does it feel to be back and to be putting up a victory on your first weekend? Uh, it feels really good to win, uh, and it feels good to be back on the stage. I think the circumstances this time are a lot better for me. And, uh, you know, it just feels good to be able to play and do well as a team. You talk about the, the circumstances for you, but also, yeah, the amount of time, you know, that you've been working towards this goal of not only appearing on the LCS stage, but competing to prove that you are one of the best mid laners. What do you feel has changed for you personally, or what is the growth that you think you've exemplified over the last two years that has brought you to this point? I think comparing uh, back to my time on Echo Fox, I'm just a lot more comfortable playing on stage. Um, that was my first time playing on stage. And since then, I had a few games uh, in Academy where we play playing on stage. And then these games now, it's just the experience really helps. Now, with that, you join uh, the Dignitas team that has been uh, pretty exciting for all of us as viewers all year long. In spring, uh, the storyline was, you know, a lack of expectation for the roster and how they blew it all out of the water uh, coming through the end of the split. And we're sitting just outside that top echelon of teams. So I'm curious for yourself, from the outside perspective in spring and now stepping into the roster, what you feel needs to change? What more growth needs to happen for the team to break into that top tier finally? Uh, well, I think Dig is just a really strong team with uh, Dardock and Aphromu kind of calling the shots and leading most of the plays. And I think uh, the idea of bringing me in is just to help with draft flexibility and just open up like strategies and champs to play around mid, mid jungle. And we're just trying to like kick up the aggression and take take teams from the uh, take games from the top teams. Well, you talk about draft flexibility. Your opponent tomorrow uh, exemplifies uh, that notion, which is perks in the mid lane. We've seen uh, an incredible uh, LeBlanc performance out of him just yesterday. When you look ahead to that matchup and kind of the titan that he is as an individual player, how do you feel you'll stack up? I'm excited to play versus him. Yeah, I don't have any nerves. I'm just looking forward to it. That's what I like to hear. And finally, I think what's so interesting when we look at your career uh, and the following that you've created is that you do have such a vocal and staunch group of fans behind you in support. What has that been like uh, as a guy who's been around uh, for a number of years and, and is, is pushing to continue to be the best to have that kind of vocal support behind you? I really appreciate all the fans, anyone who supports me. I think my journey throughout league has been kind of unique and up and down for sure so you know it's nice to have support throughout the way all right and just lastly when it, when it comes to this splits goals obviously people are looking at playoffs and finishing you know as high up as possible and making that trip towards worlds do you feel like it, this is the roster that you're going to be able to do it with and finally go international i mean i'd love to that'd be great um, all right yeah we'll see we'll have to see then there it is congratulations on the victory today you see it's awesome to see you out here on the lcs stage. thank you all right, from here, we're going to a break. When we come back, we're breaking down the day at the State Farm Analyst Desk. We'll see you soon.